A private launch company, SpaceX, is looking for a place to launch their rockets. They've been paring down from a long list of states where they might uh, have this facility, including California and Alaska and Virginia. But most recently, they've gotten it down to Georgia, Florida, Puerto Rico, and Texas, which is why we're joined by Gilberto Salinas. He's the executive vice president of the Brownsville, Texas Economic Development Council. So I guess you're hoping they decide on Texas, Gil. I sure hope so, yes. It's, uh, it's a very interesting project. We are in a very fortunate uh, position to be hosting a company like SpaceX. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I mean, just that in itself, I mean, that's just a cool project, you know. We're the southernmost city in the continental United States. That's the key word, the continental United States. Right, and we yeah. should just mention why that's important. That's important because the further south you go towards the equator, the more of a boost Mother Earth gives you when you're trying to launch into orbit. So southern locations tend to be cheaper, better for rocket companies. Exactly, and that's why we're, we're in the run, and that's why we have been shortlisted. It's a project we've been working for a couple of years now. So the further south you are, um, you know, the closer to the equator. And for this particular uh, uh, launch site, it would be the equatorial orbits that they would be looking at. And they would be launching in an easterly direction. So we need one, a whole lot of nothing, which, you know, Browns were about 15 miles away, 12 to 15 miles away from the actual site on the beach. So in between the city and the beach where the launch site is uh, being uh, uh, proposed uh, to be built, there's, there's nothing out there, that's one. And then the other one, you need a huge uh, body of water. So we have the Gulf of Mexico to launch over. And from where we're at, you'll hit that window, which is uh, the area between the southern tip of Florida and, uh, and Cuba. So from there, then it starts getting closer into the equator. So that's, that's, that's been one of the main drivers. That. And of course, you know, we're, we're Texas, and, and we're known for having uh, a great business environment. Let's talk about that business environment. So do we expect this to be a job producer in the Brownsville area, or is SpaceX going to import everyone from California and elsewhere? It's a combination of both. Uh, they're looking at about uh, 600 uh, direct jobs, and then uh, indirectly be creating another 400 jobs just with you know, a string of companies that would be coming in and you know, they start working with suppliers. Uh, they'd be paying some pretty good wages, especially for our region. And uh, so, uh, you know, the beauty about this project is that their ramp-up schedule is going to be several years down the road. So by the time they get to actually 600 jobs or more, it would be a few years. So that would give us, uh, in our region, an opportunity to develop a pipeline of, uh, well, I guess, rocket scientists. And uh, we just actually happen to have an astrophysics uh, program at the Uni University of Texas at Brownsville. Uh, we just have one, and uh, they're they're great. Uh, it's a great program, and now they're working with SpaceX and trying to expand their program to address that need of uh, developing that pipeline. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that it's nice to have the Gulf of Mexico to launch over. Dragon currently lands in the water and is recovered. Has SpaceX talked to you about actually landing in the Gulf and recovering very close to the base for more airplane-like operations, quicker uh, turnaround? I, have, I haven't been previewed to those discussions, so I'm not too sure. Um, now, the difference between this site and their other two sites, because they, they have Cape Canaveral and they're, uh, they're currently building their second site in Vandenberg, California, is that um, this would be for commercial operations. So uh, there would not be anything uh, related to NASA being launched from South Texas. It would be all for, for their uh, commercial clients, which, you know, it's, it's, they've got a lot of business. They, they need to be launching like th today. And that's, uh, um, so as far as where, you know, they would be re retrieving the capsule, I'm not too sure about that. Mm -hmm. You're a business guy, so is this not a kind of an odd business? I mean, Federal Express, FedEx, and UPS, and even United Airlines and American Airlines, they don't build their own planes. They just lease them or buy them and fly them. Mm -hmm. Is this kind of an unusual hybrid to actually build the technology and operate it? Uh, yes and no. Um, yes in the sense that, yeah, I mean, a lot of companies have gotten used to just outsourcing everything. Uh, no, in the sense that uh, I've, I've visited their facility in Hawthorne, uh, and I mean, you just see it. I mean, they're building rockets. Steel comes in one end, and out comes out the rockets. Coincidentally, we do something similar, except in a different industry. Uh, we build uh, in our area. It's it's a manufacturing and a logistics hub, which is also attractive to this company. Uh, that's what we've been doing for generations. In uh, we build uh, components for the automotive industry. We also build uh, these mega machines, which are uh, uh, the offshore jackup oil rig platforms. We build them from scratch in our area. Uh, steel comes in and now comes out these floating cities. So 
we're not strangers to it. Uh, however, uh, we weren't very well versed in the aerospace industry. I mean, that's just something that was not on our radar. It was just Houston, and that was it. Uh, in the last two years, I've immersed myself in that topic. And what I've been telling most business people, entrepreneurs in our area is, you know, start doing the same thing, get versed in that topic. Because if this project hits, uh, it's, it's, there's gonna be opportunities like uh, nobody can imagine. So I've, I've told everybody, start getting ready for this. It could hit us. We might be doing right now what perhaps Houston was doing back in the late 50s, you know, it was just energy oil, you know, and, and then NASA came along. Well, I'm, I'm hopeful and optimistic that that's the position we're in right now. Okay, so the geography is there, labor force is there. How's the regulatory environment, or are you guys making any concessions to bring SpaceX into your town? Uh, that's, uh, we're looking at the several variables, external variables, I guess, uh, that, that need to be addressed before they would make a decision or make it to where that area is, is really attractive for them to come in and launch. And one of them is the, uh, the environmentals. I mean, right now the company is going through working with the FAA on an environmental impact uh, statement, which is a study. I think we're about... Uh, almost a year and a half in of, of doing the EIS and the results hopefully will be out here in the next uh, well soon and uh, shortly thereafter there will be a second public hearing we already we had one about a year ago they'll have a hearing where they would have uh, give the uh, public or you know members of the community an opportunity to come in and voice their their support or they have concerns about the environment and uh, What's interesting is I've been fortunate enough to, to have visited the, their launch site at Cape, Cape Canaveral. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's kind of it's, it's eerie because it's, it's their geography, their topography, the vegetation, everything that's out there is very, very extremely similar to what we have down on the Brownsville area. It's just a little bit greener than where we're at. But, uh, you know, they've got the sea turtles, the piping plovers, different animals that they have to, you know, uh, um, uh, work with, you know, the ospreys. I think they have bald eagles and manatees, those are two that we don't have, but as a result of having a launch site in Cape Canaveral, uh, wildlife, uh, the, the environment, the habitat out there has really flourished because once you have a launch site, nothing else is gonna build around it. And that's what we expect that to have down in South Texas. I mean, it's, it's, uh, we expect for the environment to do very, very well uh, with uh, having a, uh, a launch site in the area. Mm -hmm. Well, not everyone, of course, agrees with that conception of the world. There are those from the environmental camp, mm -hmm. so self-described, mm -hmm. who think that, well, we're going to be launching rockets over Boca Chica Beach, one of the most beautiful exactly. beaches on the coast, and it is in a wildlife area, and they speak about noxious chemicals coming out the tailpipes mm -hmm. of, of these rockets. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about that? Uh, I grew up in, in the Brownsville area. I have, and this Boca Chica Beach, it's an eight, eight mile stretch of beach sandwiched between South Potter Island and uh, the Rio Grande. So this is, this is it, this is the farthest out you're gonna get. I grew up uh, fishing out there uh, as a kid and I still go out there at least once a month. I, I'm just an outdoorsman myself. And I know who goes out there. Um, I know uh, uh, when they go out there, when's the high season, when it's not the high season and I guess my response to your question is suddenly now the interest to go out there and save the environment. Where were they all these other years when I was out there? And and uh, and you know we, we need we need uh, to do a better job of you know the beach. Uh, there's you know a little bit of litter out there. We need to do a better job of cleaning it. Well, where were they? Where was everybody? Right. Suddenly now they've come up and said that they want to help, which is great. But uh, you know they've launched at, they launched at Cape Canaveral right now. There's plans in place to mitigate those environmental risks, and uh, uh, you know the sea turtle being one of them. Uh, same, you know, the same would apply down in South Texas. Right. And we should also say that what we've heard so far from SpaceX is that they're not intending to launch that often, maybe once a month. Do you think they'll stick to that once a month calendar? It would be that's that's uh, at least uh, by law. You know, going they're going through the environmental. That's what they have stated, and that's what the FAA is gonna gonna hold uh, the company and the community to. Uh, one launch uh, per month, 12 times per year. I think they would be doing 10 of the Falcon 9s so with a Dragon capsule and then uh, two of the Falcon Heavies, right. which is, I'm just excited just thinking right. about that. So, uh, you know, the, on the tourism side, I think every unmanned launch in, uh, in Florida attracts about 40,000 visitors. Um, 
I think uh, we've run the numbers, we've crunched the numbers. We're looking at about maybe 15,000 visitors that we will get. Who knows, maybe more. Right. Nonetheless, we don't have enough rooms to, you know, for 15,000 people. So this is, this is, uh, we're living in exciting times right now. So Gil, the state of Texas is famous for the Johnson Space Center. That's where mm -hmm. Mission Control is, but they don't actually launch any rockets from there. Is this a first for the state? And what's that like? Do you need to change the laws? Uh, actually, that's uh, what we're working on right now. I mean, we've never launched anything from the state of Texas, at least of this magnitude. Uh, in this particular project, we would have, actually all three of them, we would have uh, a launch site, a launch command center, similar to what Houston has, uh, and then a ground tracking station as well. And, and uh, in order to be able to launch uh, right now in the state of Texas, uh, for some reason, uh, within the law, you can, uh, there's, uh, if you have an operation and it's just too loud, then it's your right, you know, to, to be able to say, you know what, uh, uh, it's too loud. You can't do that in, in my backyard. So uh, I think uh, commercial and private airports are exempt. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, firing shooting ranges are exempt as well. So now we just kind of have to find a way to amend it to, to include uh, uh, launch sites. And that's been moving along lines. Now there's overwhelming support for the project at the state level because it's a true Texas project. Um, then the other one's the Open Beach Act as well. You know, right now in the state of Texas, you can't close a public beach for commercial use, you know, for public use, yes, but not for commercial. Well, we're having to also add some language, amend it, to narrow it down to uh, they would only be launching during the summer months, you know, between uh, on weekdays, not so not on, week, on weekends and not on holidays, you know. So, so SpaceX has been tremendous. Um, has been very good about accommodating the needs of the public as far as the beach is, is concerned. And the other one is, uh, you know, infrastructure. You know, they are in a remote area, and we do have to look at, you know, getting, you know, electrical capacity, what, you know, lines, you know, overhead on the ground, uh, backup lines. Uh, you know, and that gets a little costly. Then, you know, uh, water, wastewater, and um, and that's where you know the incentives program comes in. And at the end of the day, we can't be naive. That's that's what drives projects sometimes. You know, we are in a race. We're in stiff competition with Florida, Puerto Rico, and as of late, Georgia has come on pretty strong. Mm -hmm. So, but we're Texas, and and we're we 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 tend to be pretty. I don't like to use the word aggressive, but assertive when it comes to you know you know putting uh, a nice package together. And that would be between Brownsville. You know, Cameron County, uh, South Padre Island, uh, the university has also, you know, you know, um, you know, joined in, and as well as you know, the, the you know, the governor's office with Governor Rick Perry, and you know, being able to to put, you know, a nice package on the table to to recruit this company. Last question, Gil, and it's a real tough one. Best Mexican food in Brownsville: Camperos or Carolinas? Oh, you know your stuff. I'm impressed. Actually. Uh, Camperos is up there, uh, Carolinas is up there, uh, Mi Pueblito is pretty good. It just depends. We have the Tex-Mex and then we have the border Mexican food and then we have the true Mexican food. So it just depends which one you want to hit. But uh, you can't go wrong, especially with any, if you find a little hole in the wall, you can't go wrong there. I need to get educated about the true Mexican, so I'll see you there. All right, good deal. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Kim. Thank you. And for Space.com, I'm Dave Brody. Space.com.